Doom. Okay, have you read uh, Naval's Almanac? Yeah, shout out to um, Jack Butcher. Er- no, no, no. Uh, Eric, right? Eric Jorg- I think Jorgensen is the last name. Yeah, he was the main guy, and Jack uh, animated it. Illustrated or whatever. it, yeah. Oh, there it is. So, Naval has, uh, so it's a two part. I actually don't know how it came to be. Did Naval just do a bunch of podcasts and interviews and he summarized Naval's feelings? Yeah, basically. So, Naval had been putting out his content for years, different podcasts and stuff like that. And a lot of people like me and Eric and others were big fans of it. And what he did was he said, all right. Uh, you, I don't know if you've ever bought the book or have the book Poor, Char- Poor Charlie's Almanac. I think yeah. that's what this is riffed off of, which is Charlie Munger, who's Warren Buffett's business partner. It was like about Charlie Munger. And so uh, he tried to make, you know, if Naval is one of the good, great thinkers of our time, then he tried to make the compilation of all the shit Naval said. He took it from all the times Naval talked about wealth and they pulled it all together and put it all in one place and distilled it down. And this book uh, is broken into two parts. The first is wealth. The second is happiness. I found the wealth stuff to be a little bit boring. Um, I don't even remember. I I actually skipped over a lot of it. I I don't even remember what he said about wealth. Do you? Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's the same thing that that we've talked about on here. But he has this tweet storm that went ultra, ultra viral. Like maybe, I don't know, 50 to 100 million people have seen it by now. And it's called How to Get Rich Without Getting Lucky. And he talks about these four things. I, I, I can go into it or I can skip it if you want to yeah, talk, about you can talk, talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Basically his summary is like, you know, here's some of the principles that over, you know, Naval's become very wealthy. And over time he sort of learned for himself. He wanted to be wealthy as a kid because he grew up pretty poor and he wanted to be wealthy and he wanted to be wealthy, not in a way that required outlier luck. And he says this great thing, which is like, you know, I want to, if I lived life a hundred times, I want to end up wealthy, you know, 98, uh, 99 times or like, if you took away all my wealth now and you drop me, you know, butt naked in, in the streets of, of Bangalore, um, I want to be able to, again, in five, 10 years, end up rich again. And so that means I actually understand the principles of how this is done and I'm not relying on, on luck. And so he talks about those principles and he basically says, you know, you want to have these like three or four things. So if, well, first, stop renting out your time. You'll never get rich renting out your time, which is, you know, 90 something percent of people are employees somewhere. You are basically renting your time to an employer and um, you'll never become wealthy or you rarely will become wealthy with that path. Uh, you, you become wealthy by owning a piece of a business, either as an investor or as a business owner or as an employee who has shares like employees at Google or Facebook who have seen, you know, gotten a lot of wealth by the appreciation of those shares. And so um, then he talks about, you know, how do you how do you get to that point? Well, you need a few things you want. um you know, you, what he calls specific knowledge, which is basically like, like Sam, you know how to grow a newsletter, you know how to write content, you know, copywriting, right? You know, certain things. And so you need specific knowledge. Then you pair that with accountability. So you want to do it in the name of the hustle or Sam or some brand that uh, accrues that reputation. So you want to put your name on the line and say, I'm going to do this thing. And so that when you do it, you get paid for it. You know, the people at the hustle who write your daily newsletter, um, but are less n- well known. They actually have certain skills. They have certain unique knowledge, specific knowledge, but they don't have the account. They're not putting up the accountability. They're not living and dying by the sword of this news that are working or not. Um, maybe inside the company they are, but not externally. And then you have leverage. So, you know, back in the day, if you wrote something, you would maybe distribute it locally on your newspaper or on a flyer or something like that. Um, but with the internet, you have leverage where you can put this in an email and you can send it, you can put the same amount of work in to write the email yeah. once you can send it to a hundred thousand people, a million people, or 10 million people. It's the same amount of work because you have tremendous leverage through technology. And so basically he talks about like, uh, use these three things, get specific knowledge, be accountable, put your name on the line. That way you get the risk and the reward. And lastly, apply leverage to maximize the, the value that you get out of the thing. That's kind of the, the basic formula. And the whole book basically um, is broken down to this idea of um, life is about health, wealth, and happiness. Or sorry, wealth, health, happiness. And he says we actually pursue it. We go, we pursue wealth, then we do health, then we do happiness. And he's like, that's actually a fine way to pursue it. It's that's a very practical and fine way to pursue it. The reality is, is that the, it's the reverse is true. Like the, in terms of importance, so it's what happiness, the most, yeah, happiness, health, wealth. But it's whatever. It's fine to pursue that way. And he has this beautiful line in the book where he says something like, um, of course, once you get the wealth, you're going to see that it's actually not nearly as important as you thought. But 
you're not going to listen to me and you have to pretty much discover it on your own. Yeah. You're not going to listen to me. I wouldn't have listened to me. Um, you know, the type of person who's attracted to this content, you know, they're, they're going to go through the same thing. You have to learn that the hard way. And so that was pretty interesting. So I liked that. But the second half is all about happiness. And there was a few things that kind of stuck out, stuck out to me. The first is that um, he basically acknowledged, he, he was like, look, don't worry. It, it, well, let, let me preface this by saying Naval interests me because he's like, I mean, he's probably a billionaire, I have to imagine. He started Angelus, which is a multi-billion dollar company. He's an investor. Like, he's in the game. And he acknowledges, that, like, I'm in the game. And so, like, this is a little bit hypocritical. But basically, he was like, what I have found is that, A, happiness must be a choice. Like, I've been unhappy for decades. And then I decided, you know, I'm going to be happy. And he steals a lot of ph uh, philosophy from Stoicism. And he steals a lot of it from Buddha, uh, Buddhism. And the idea here is that like your past is unimportant and the future is unimportant. And to say that you want to do X, Y, and Z for legacy, that's bullshit because what's going to happen is when you die, it's going to be as if you were, you know, if it's the same feeling that you had before you were born, which is like nothing. So like who cares about some bullshit legacy, <laughs> which is like hard to fight against. Right. Uh, but, and he, he's like, it only matters about the, about the present and where you are now. And that gets a little bit fluffy, but I still thought it was really useful and oddly, did you? If you read the book, he talks about not working hard. He was like, "You actually should only do work that feels like play." Yeah. And I thought that was kind of cool. And he's like, "Life's too short, by the way, just to grind and work your ass off." Which again, I'm like, "But Naval, you're like a billionaire. Like, there, is this like what you know? How do you? I have to like kind of come to grasp with, with this a little bit." But I thought it was cool. He also talks about um, very oddly, gives diet advice. He's like, "Just don't eat sugar." Stay away from sugar, do high intensity <laughs> interval training and stretch a lot. Yeah. And he, he even says, he goes, uh, I try not to, he's like, you know, I don't talk too much about health because I'm pretty good at health. I'm okay, but I'm not self-actualizing that. Meaning like in wealth, he's done better than 99.9% .9 of people. Uh, so, you know, for him to talk about it, well, he's self-actualized it. He has actually done it uh, for himself and seen it done by many other people. And so he feels comfortable putting out his whole philosophy on it. He's like, in terms of health, like I'll say some general things that you, you, you know, it's hard to argue against, but I try not to talk too much about it, even though it's very important because I myself, have, you know, for many years didn't have an exercise routine or wasn't, you know, the best eater. And now I'm better, but I'm still not the best. I'm not world-class at that. I'm not 99.9% .9 at, at that 